We're in Goulburn, New South Wales. And it's a quiet little country town. But in its time, it was the most important town south of Sydney. And in this quiet little laneway at the back of the courthouse, right in the middle of town, is the gravesite of one man. Who was he? Why was he buried here? And when did it happen? It's all part of the history of Australian bush rangers. Who is that man buried in Langway and Goulburn? Well, his name is Thomas Wetton. He was born in Lancaster, England in 1815. At the tender age of 14, commits his first crime and appears in court for larceny, which is stealing. And after four altercations with the law, he will be finally sentenced to transportation to the colony of New South Wales for life. And he arrives here in 1831 on the Exmouth and is immediately made a servant of Dr. Redfern, who lives out at Walgoola. Now, there's a map on screen, and that is the known explored area of New South Wales at that time, and that little dot is where Walgoola was, right on the edge of no man's land. But we pulled up the plan of Walgoola, and we went out there, and you can see we found Walgoola Homestead, and we went and had a look, and that scene on screen now is probably where the homestead once stood, or possibly one of the outbuildings. But that is where Thomas Wetton will live, for quite a while and he keeps his nose clean he doesn't get into any trouble until an Archibald Thompson arrives in 1835 around 1836 and he is uh, better than going to be known in, by history as Scotchy. Now these two must get up to a bit of trouble because by 1838 they have escaped from Dr Redfern's place joined up with two other men in the bush a guy by the name of Reynolds which we think where well, it may have been an ex-soldier and another guy by the name of Russell. Now, we're not sure how they met up, but all these three, four men are going to live into the bush together, but they're going to continue to raid Redfern's place. They don't go very far, they just hang around. Why do they do that? Well, you've got to remember, in 1840, all these bush rangers were in actual fact convicts. They had no bush skills and had no idea how to live in the bush. They were living on the edge of no man's land, so they had no idea what was outside their known area probably never been on a horse until they arrived in Australia and there was Aboriginals still in quite large numbers wandering around with spears and they were probably absolutely scared the daylights out of them so these men would hang around the populated areas and the well-worn tracks but after a couple of years they murder one of Dr Redfern's servants and a Michael Peake blows a whistle on them and puts an article in the paper and a reward is offered out for them so they come back and seek revenge on Michael Peake in the early part of December of 1839, they murder him. So then they flee, then they take off down south through the Abercrombie Ranges and they finish up at a property owned by Dr Gibson and it's, his overseer there is an Oliver Fry. Now the story goes that Oliver Fry had one round left in a, in a rifle and he takes aim and shoots Scotchy and kills him. But there's another story going around that in actual fact Fry didn't kill him, he wounded him and Scotchy would finish his own life. But anyway, that happens on the 18th of January. 19th of January, day later, they're over at a Francis Oaks place. Not very far from uh, uh, where Oliver Fry kills Scotchy, as you can see on screen. And it's there where somebody, and we think it's Reynolds, kills John Hawkins. Now that's witnessed by Francis Oaks and he raises the alarm with the police in Goulburn. And they come up, come up searching for the bush rangers around that area. Meanwhile, a day later, they're down at Gunning and they're raiding the store of a man by the name of Mr. Cooper. Now, Mr. Cooper had a neighbour across the road, John Hume. Now, John Hume was a brother of the famous explorer Hamilton Hume. And John Hume hears some shots go off, grabs a weapon, grabs some of his workers and goes across to check on his neighbour, Mr. Cooper, to see what's going on at the store and confronts the bush rangers. There's a verbal altercation finishing in three shots being fired by the bush rangers and all hitting John Hume and killing him. Now remember the pistols of the day could only fire one shot at a time, so all three bush rangers fired at John Hume. But they flee north again to, to uh, back near Francis Oaks Place in actual fact, and by the 24th of January, four days later, the police ambush them at their camp with Francis Oaks with them, so he's able to identify the men and in the shootout, uh, Russell gets wounded by the police 
And being the desperate men they were, they were not going to go back to the life they had. They And he would, Russell will take his own life. And he will leave uh, Wetton and Reynolds to face the justice system and stand trial. And this is a Goulburn courthouse today. And somewhere in those grounds lies Thomas. But Thomas and Reynolds will be sent to Sydney to stand trial and they'll be found guilty of the murder of John Kennedy Hume and sentenced to be hanged. And Reynolds jumps a gun and hangs himself in Sydney. But Thomas is going to be sent back here to Goulburn as a bit of an example of what happens if you commit those sort of crimes. And they're going to make up his coffin and set him down here with a set of gallows because they've never hanged anybody with a rope in Goulburn before. Before that time, they used to use a giblet. So Thomas is sent down here astride his coffin with a gallows in the back on a dray. Now you can imagine how Thomas must have felt sitting astride your coffin knowing what fate awaits you. But he gets here and he probably gets the opportunity to help them build the gallows and dig his grave and he'd be hanged in this area behind us in full public. And people off the streets will actually go in and watch Thomas be hanged. Now we know he buried him alongside the gallows and when they build that jail somewhere around the 1850s they find his grave and they relocate it inside the walls of the new prison. Now we contacted the New South Wales courts and asked for permission to go through and scan the area to see if we could find Thomas. But due to security reasons, and this is an act of court, they said they wouldn't allow us to do that. But we hope that sometime in the future, somebody will get the opportunity to scan that area and do a bit of an investigation and find out where Thomas's resting place is once and forever. So why do we think Thomas Wetton is buried in and around the grounds of the Goulburn Courthouse. Well, a lot of research went into this part of the story. Now, the plan on screen that you can see is the area set aside in 1830 for the Goulburn Jail and Courthouse. But when Thomas Wetton was hanged there and held there, it was only a temporary, temporary structure. And that's well documented. And he was hanged outside of that and buried outside of that. So he could have been buried basically anywhere on that block of land. But 15 years later, they go and build a new jail. And in the process of doing it, they discover his grave. And it's documented that they reinterred him inside the walls of that jail. So we went to a lot of trouble to find out where that one stood. And we believe the area shown on screen is the area where that jail stood. And it's also confirmed with some diggings that were done recently, an archeological dig that confirmed that that's probably the right location because they found the foundation for the walls as well. So that is where in that area is where Thomas must have been relocated to, other than that area shaded in the middle, and that is where the cells once stood. So we assume they didn't put him under the cells, but in the grounds. Now, fast forward to 1880, and they demolished the whole jail, and they're gonna redevelop the site for the courthouse and the new buildings that will come later. And there's no mention of what happened to Thomas. He's completely disappeared from history. So, if you overlay our jail on top of a modern aerial photo, you can see there's a building to the north, that's the Telstra building, and the building to the south is the courthouse. Now, you would have thought that when they built those buildings during the foundations, they must have found something in, in the in foundations, a gravesite. And there's nothing ever been reported that we can find that someone found anything. So we assumed that Thomas is either not under those gray areas or is under there and we're never gonna find him. The area in the middle, as you can see, is where the old cell stood, so we assumed he's not there. So that leaves the area to the left, which is a car park, he could be under there, or the area to the right of that highlighted, which is just gardens, grounds, and he could be there. So that is why we believe Thomas Wetton still remains in the grounds of the Goulburn Courthouse. So if you get a chance, take a walk along that laneway, and you might come across the ghost of the Goulburn Courthouse.